So who here is getting a little bit excited about Christmas? Has anyone got decorations up at home? Yeah? You can tell that there's a buzz in the air, and although there's things going on with COVID and things, I think there's optimism around Christmas. Um, and we, we were in Exeter yesterday, and we were doing a little bit of Christmas shopping, we just had to pop in to do a few bits and bobs, but it ended up being a whole morning, and town was crazy, it was so busy, it was just people milling around, rushing around, the shops were crammed full of people, and it just got me thinking about what a busy season it is right now, um, and how there's so many people out and about, all thinking about their Christmas plans. Um, so it got me thinking about the passage um, about Mary and Martha, where Jesus is invited to Martha's house, um, so I'm just going to read this passage and then play a song whilst we kind of reflect on that, and then I'll, I'll run through the message. Um, so it's Luke 10, and it's verse 38 to 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So I've just got a song, um, Rachel's going to play a few minutes, um, and we're just going to have a little listen and just have a think, and then I'll come back and we'll talk about it. Take it in and just reflect on, on where we are. And the, the main, main words in that song are 
and not being in a hurry and, and just taking time to reflect. Um, this song means quite a lot to me and Holly. We played it at our wedding um, as I waited at the front of the church for Holly to walk in. Um, it's quite ironic because I was in a hurry that morning. It was, it was a rush. Me and, me and Andy, my brother, who was my best man, had spent the whole morning rushing around. We were organising flowers, not flower arranging, we were organising the delivery of flowers to different people to get there on time. Um, we were collecting cakes and we were getting buttonholes and things for people. And then we had to rush back and get changed in our, in our hotel before we went to the wedding. And we arrived there literally two or three minutes before Holly got there. It was in the Morris mine, she turned up just around the corner as me and Andy got into the church. Um, so we really were rushing around like Martha was that morning. We were trying to get things ready. Um, and we kind of lost track. It was, just, it was just such a rush to get everything ready and get to the church on time. But fortunately it was a perfect day and it all came together. And it was great and we shouldn't have been worried about about rushing and um, could have taken our time maybe so this morning i want to talk a little bit about our use of time particularly thinking about going into advent and it being a busy season um, so i'm sure we all have very different outlooks about our time some of us might be quite relaxed about how we use our time we might take life steadily and we might be able to find time to fit god into our week we might be really organized and we might do all of our tasks and get everything done or we might put God's time first and we might, we might spend that quality time with him. Some of us might be a bit like me, we might try to squeeze way too much into our time. We might be an optimist with our time. We might rush from one thing to the next and wish that there were more hours in the day. Um, or maybe you're someone who kind of fears the future or you worry about things that are to come and you wish that time would slow down a bit. I know that me on a Sunday evening, I wish that the Sunday evening would slow down and that Monday morning would be a bit further away. I think we all do that a bit when we're going to work on the Monday. Um, others of us might be distracted. Um, we might wish that time was, would hurry up. Some of us now might be thinking, oh, I wish it was Christmas Day. I wish I could just open those presents or celebrate and have Christmas dinner. And that's a whole month away. It's not even December yet, but sometimes we rush on with our time and we wish that something just around the corner would happen. I think whichever of these categories we find ourselves in, um, we can all examine how we use our time, we can all consider how we use our time a bit more wisely. So let's, let's jump back into the story of Mary and Martha and look at it in a bit more detail. I'll just give a quick profile on each of the characters in that story. Um, so we've got, in Luke 10, 38 to 42, we find, about, find, find out about three people. First of all, we've got Martha. She opens up her home and she wants to be the perfect host for Jesus. However, however she was upset, she was frantic and she was worried about many things. And she was trying to do all the chores and to make it a perfect day, a perfect event for her guests. Um, and she just couldn't stop doing, she was a doer. Um, and she didn't feel like her sister was doing anything to help. She blamed her sister for the lack of help. Um, and she felt that Mary's way of serving Jesus was inferior to hers, um, and she saw her own form of serving as more important. She wanted to blame her busyness on her sister, so she was inflicted with all this work to do because her sister wasn't doing anything. Um, but actually that busyness might have been self-inflicted. In her desire to serve, she neglected giving her guest quality time, and her guest was Jesus. How many of us do that? We neglect to give our quality time to Jesus. Um, potentially for Martha, she, she was striving and it became self-serving. She was trying to look good for approval or for self-satisfaction, for self-service. The definition of self-serving is serving one's own interests, often in disregard of the truth or the interests of others. So Martha had this belief that she wanted it to be the perfect event, but maybe she, that overcame her and she wasn't able to see that she could spend that time with Jesus. And then secondly, we have the second sister, Mary. Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he had to say. She was attentive and she had no distractions. She was ready to receive. Jesus said that what she had chosen was better and it wouldn't be taken away from her. So as much as Martha was maybe complaining and saying, Mary, I need, I need your help. Jesus wasn't going to take away the fact that Mary was listening and spending her time listening to Jesus. So the third character we have is Jesus, and Jesus recognised that Martha was upset and worried. He could see that Martha was struggling, and Jesus knows what we're going through. He knows when we're, when we're struggling, he knows 
when we're, when we're going through things, we can't hide them from him. He already knows that. So he knew that with Martha. He knew what she was going through. Um, and he didn't blame Martha for doing the chores. Obviously, she was working really hard. And God never shames us or condemns us. He may, convict, he may convict us to make changes, but there's no shame involved. Um, so this morning, maybe as we reflect, we, we might feel convicted about how we spend our time, like Jesus tried to convict Martha. But Jesus recognised that Mary had made this choice to block out all of the distractions and to focus on him. He recognised that Mary had humbled herself to sit at his feet to learn. He recognised that she showed full devotion without these distractions. So as we sit here now, if we listen to the song and, and hearing the story, who do we relate to the most out of that story? Do we relate to Martha or to Mary? Would we be hurried? Would we be worried? Or would we be rushing? Would we be a busybody like Martha, trying to get everything done really quickly in that time to serve Jesus? Maybe if we feel like that, we should feel challenged, in the same way Martha was by Jesus, to consider our, our use of time, our priorities, and how we serve wholeheartedly. Or would we aim to be like Mary, hum humbling herself to make time to sit at Jesus' feet with no distractions and show that devotion? Whoever we relate to today, we know that when we choose to spend time in God's presence, we will never regret it. Um, what we receive in those moments will never be taken away, just like Jesus said in the final verse. We may relate to this if we have, have ever found God to give us an encouragement, a verse, or a word that's stuck with us over many years that we can come back to. Um, and we'll never regret more time we've spent with him thinking about those verses. So this morning I've got five R's for us to think about, a list of five R's to go through and think about when we're considering our time and how better to use our time. So the first R is in the song quite a lot, and it's we need to spend less time rushing. Um, at home, Holly has a coaster on her desk, um, and it's a quote from Alice in Wonderland, and it's about the little white rabbit. And it says, the hurrier I go, the slower I get. Um, and it talks about the rabbit kind of rushing to get from one thing to the other, and is a bit frantic. And I wonder how many of us are like that rabbit in our day-to-day -day lives. We try to squeeze in so much, and we're so frantic, and then we find we don't have any time left. We could be like Martha, and we're sweeping every corner of the house, trying to get everything perfect. But then are we striving in vain if we don't have that time to spend with our guest, especially when our guest is Jesus? Mm. It can take us away from the present moment and, and miss out on a beautiful moment with Jesus and time where we'll learn and develop. We can tell that Martha was missing out and she felt frustrated, she was resentful and she, and she couldn't soak up every word like Mary was. Um, being rushed off our feet takes us away from the present moment and how can we how can we find time in that present moment to be in God's presence? Maybe we just need to rest, rest in God's presence like Mary, um, and what we're missing by keeping ourselves constantly busy. Could we make time by missing that and, and sitting at God's feet and hearing what he has to say? Um, so here's a couple, a couple of verses from elsewhere in the Bible that we can think about. When we feel completely bankrupt of time and energy, we have to remember what it says in Hebrews 4, 15. It says, Christ has endured all the same tests and trials as we do. So Christ has been on, on the earth and he's, he's lived a human life. He knows that he can be busy and that it's hard to find time. Um, but, but we have to respect that we can make that time with him. Um, and nothing we do with our day-to-day -day time is beyond the power of God. We, should, we sh shouldn't rush to fit other things in when we know that time spent with God is well worth it. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, it sums up this point. It says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm, let mo nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labour in the Lord is not in vain. So that's, that's saying whatever work we do, let it be God's work, and let us spend time with him as we're doing, as we're doing that work. Um, so just reflecting on the song and one of the lines in it, we, need to, we just need to be prepared to say, I'm not going to rush in, I'm not going to rush on ahead. So the second arm, number two, is time spent resting. Before we even start to receive from God, we have to be able to make time for him. We have to get into the pattern of having time resting, um, putting aside our usual tasks, our jobs, our hobbies, um, and our worries. We need to put down our phones, our emails, our social media, and just take time. And we have to use that time to be with God. We have to be intentional with that time. 
For Martha, she just couldn't imagine this. She had to be, with, be busy serving and she had to do everything else before she put that down and, and was, was with God. And how often can we associate with that? I can definitely associate with that where I think, for all these things to do before I sit down and just spend some time with God, or to sit down and listen to a worship song. Um, we, can always, we can probably all think about one relative at Christmas who never stops working. There's always, there's always one relative, isn't there, who is busy, who's preparing food, who's waiting on guests, who's giving nibbles out, who's pouring drinks. There's someone who spends so much time looking after everyone else that they can't fully rest and enjoy the festivities. And how many of us are like that and we feel guilty to take a break? We feel that there's a responsibility um, and we have this purpose. But maybe we can have these moments of rest, these moments of quiet, um, and stop hurrying and, and just break the busy pattern that we find ourselves in. During the summer, um, Hollywood regularly challenged me to just rest, especially after a busy week's work. Um, I'm someone who can't really sit still very long. Um, and when it was nice weather, I wanted to be outside doing jobs. Um, yeah, Julius will, will probably agree with me. He's, he's our next door neighbour, and you can probably hear the tools going next door probably sick and tired of the sound of drills and saws. Um, I would be busy making benches or building a fence. And Holly would just say to me on a Sunday, can you just sit still, can you just rest? But I'd have, I'd have these next jobs that I wanted to do. Um, and I loved doing all these jobs. It was something that I enjoyed doing. And it helped me to switch off from day to day work and things. But this, but this isn't true rest. Um, God wants us to give us our, our time, give up our time wholeheartedly to be with him and to rest in his word and to get to a point where we're so tuned in to his spirit and his presence we need to give up that time to be with him um, and particularly on a Sunday Hollywood challenged me and said this is a Sabbath we need to have a Sabbath and a rest and just to enjoy that as well and not to be distracted from it um, so Matthew 11 28 kind of sums this up it says come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest so it's just the idea of rest, just taking that time first of all, um, we can then use that time with God. So it's, it's getting into the habit of having that time, which I found very hard to, to stick to. Um, so the, the lyric in the song that that relates to is, Lord, I don't want to rush on ahead in my own strength when you're right here. So we don't want to look ahead to all these distractions or other things we have to prepare to prepare, prepare for. We just want to be right here with God. Number three is more time receiving. So we have to be more like Mary and receive them from God. We need to be close to God before we go out and serve him. We need to be nourished and filled by God through his word and by spending time with him. There's a saying that's quite commonly used, and I'm sure we've all heard it before, you can't pour from an empty cup. And we can recognise that sometimes when we feel drained and our cup does sometimes feel empty and there's not anything left to give others. Holly read something she found on Facebook this morning which was quite interesting. It was just a, it was a little snippet from a mum who'd written something on Facebook and it was about this eight-year-old child who was just so weary and so tired from school and things. Um, and they just needed a hug and they just needed time with their mum before going off to school that day. Um, and I think if we think of us as that eight-year-old child, sometimes we need that. We need to be surrounded by God or surrounded by Jesus and just really receive before we go out into the day and put him first in that way. The world might say, have some you time, have some time to yourself and recover and fill your cup up again. But as Christians, we come to God to fill our cup. We come to him to receive from him. And we can remember what the Bible says in the following verses. In Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If we feel empty, we can ask to receive the Holy Spirit. So in Zechariah 4.6, it says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, it says the Lord Almighty. So not by our own strength or, or our own might or our own power, but, but through God we can have that strength through the spirit. By making time for Jesus, we can let him into our lives and spend time listening to what he has to say and we can receive strength from him and from his spirit working in us. We need to make sure that receiving isn't just an afterthought and that we don't just stop after we've been so busy or if we've got time at the end of the day just to squeeze that in, just to read the, read the verse of the day or read our devotional. So the song says, I'm learning to listen, just to rest in your nearness, I'm starting to notice you are speaking. 
So by resting, we, we then receive, and we, we just have that connection, we have that relationship. And sometimes it can feel like few and far between where we make that time, but we always know that it's worth it. So number four is time to reflect. When we rest, we give, our time, give ourselves time to reflect. We can think about how we benefit from this time, resting in God's presence and receiving. And we can think, actually, this shouldn't just be something we do on a Sunday. We sit here and we reflect, we have a bit of quiet time. Um, or the occasional day when we get our tasks done a bit earlier and we can sit and reflect. We have to think, how, how does Jesus talk to Martha in that situation? And I love what it says in the message translation where Jesus talks to Martha. It says, the master said, Martha, dear Martha, you're fussing far too much and get yourself worked up over nothing. One thing only is essential and Mary has chosen it. It's the main course and it won't be taken away from her. I think that in a way that kind of sum, sums up what Jesus is trying to say really well. Um, it's saying that Martha can do all the serving that, he, that she wants to um, but the main purpose, the main course, is actually the gathering with Jesus and that time spent with Jesus. It's not eating and it's not being in a lovely clean home or having drinks brought to them. It's the time spent with Jesus. And I love the reflective nature of the entire song, Not in a Hurry, as it considers how we shouldn't, it says we, we shouldn't be in a hurry when it comes to your spirit, when it comes to his presence, and when it comes to receiving his voice. So we have to be able to, to listen and to take that time. The last star that I've got is time spent rejoicing. It's great to make time for our own quiet times and to develop our own relationship with God. <coughs> this habit changes our outlook um, on a day-to-day -day basis and we live our lives in a more Christ-like way when we do that. And we become more like him and we become more connected to him and we start to see things the way that he might see things. <coughs> And in the song it says, I want to see through your eyes. So having reflected and rested with Jesus, we want to see things through his eyes. We want to see the world how he does. And we should desire to see the world how God does by taking a step back from the busy nature of life, the busy pace of life, um, the busy Christmas shopping, whatever it is we're doing. And by having this attitude, we'll be able to rejoice in our day-to-day -day lives and reflect on God's love to other people around us and how, how we then reflect that to other people. Um, this makes me think of Romans 12 verse 1, um, which states, We are called to live every aspect of our lives as an act of worship. It says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. I think I've said this before when I've talked at church, and I don't know why it always crops up, but our, mine and Holly's favourite film is About Time. Um, the main character in About Time is conveniently called Tim, and he's from Cornwall. Um, but this Tim has a special power, unlike me, he's able to travel back in time. Um, and there's one scene in the film that we really enjoy, and I watched it on YouTube whilst I was preparing this talk. Um, and it's a scene where Tim goes, he's a lawyer, and he, he's living this life in London, um, and he's trying to get through every day frantically and he's rushing through each day and he's getting through his tasks, he's getting through court, he goes and grabs his lunch, he doesn't even look the person in the eye who's serving his lunch um, and he gets to the end of the day and he realises it's been a really tough day um, and he thinks of what his dad's told him in the past and his dad can also travel in time and his dad has said to him just live every day as if it's your last, last and to and appreciate the small things in each day. So then the second half of that scene is he goes back in time, he lives this whole day again and he looks for the very best things in the day, even the smallest things and he, he makes the most of everything um, and he, he takes his time and, to, and he takes time to say thank you and to look people in the eye when they serve him and things. And it's just a real contrast how we can live our days by rushing through our days um, not making the most of even the small things, not enjoying the small things. And I think if we, if we were to do that, as Christians, we would do that and we would include Jesus in our, in our lives, in our day-to-day -day lives, and we'd make time for that and appreciate how we could squeeze that time in and actually put it in front of everything else. So what if we could do that with every single day? We could show love and grace in the way we conduct ourselves and not just rush through in a single-minded kind of attitude. 
and we could rejoice daily in the small things and all the things we receive from other people and the time that we get to share with God. Talking about another film, kind of on a bit of a roll here. I don't know how many of you have seen the new James Bond film. Anyone? Okay, not many hands, so I'm not going to give away any spoilers. Um, now I know Daniel Craig is about the most emotionless actor. Um, however, at the end of this film, it was supposed to be really emotional. I was in the cinema with Tom, I think he shed a tear. I might have got damp under the eyes. Um, and one of the la- it was one of the last lines in the film that was kind of thought-provoking. It was a quote from a guy called Jack, Jack London. I think he's an American author. Uh, and the quote is, the proper function of man is to live, not just to exist. I should not waste my days in trying to prolong them. I should use my time. And I just thought that that was, in a film like that, where it's so action-packed and things, it was nice to have like, a reflective, little quote like that at the end. It just, it just, I think it got me and Tom both thinking as we came out of the cinema. Um, and it was a, a reminder of how valuable our time is and that we should use our day as well. We shouldn't be distracted by being busy like Martha without being ready to receive. We should be like Mary and ready to receive and reflect on what we hear before we think about what we're being called to do and to serve in a way that God is calling us to. So there's a couple of verses from Proverbs that I think are a really good way of rounding off this message and thinking about how, how we use our time. When we, and when we think about rushing on ahead and trying to plan everything in. So Proverbs 19, 21 says, Many are the plans of a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. So as humans, naturally many of the plans of our hearts, we have so many things we want to achieve, things we want to accomplish, and all the, all the people, maybe all the people we want to see, all the jobs we want to get done. Um, but we should remember that God's purpose and God's purpose and His plans are what's ultimately going to succeed. So by resting in His presence, we're doing ourselves a favour, really, and we, we will still achieve through doing that, and we will achieve for a greater good and for a greater purpose. So Proverbs 16.9 says, In their hearts humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. So whatever steps, whatever plans we have laid out in our minds, we might be sat here listing Christmas presents, listing how we're going to get prepared for Christmas. But actually whatever plans we have, if we rest in the Lord's presence and with Jesus, we will succeed through doing that. We need to be like Mary, we need to find time to put down our other duties and tasks and be able to sit at God's feet and to hear what he has to say to us. We should be able to hear him speaking to us um, because he wants us to succeed and his plan is the best for us. So I hope this message has challenged you to reflect on how we're using our time on a daily basis. I know for me that this was a, it was a challenge writing this because I've not really had much time myself to sit down and reflect over the last few months. I've been away working a lot and been busy day to day and I don't find time in the day to do this. Um, so maybe all of us, and me included, we can find time this week and this month as it gets so busy um, to just to find that time and to put that time first ahead of our hobbies, ahead of our work and ahead of our social life, particularly as we get busy maybe seeing people during the Christmas season. And there's always so much danger of being sucked into the chaos around Christmas. I think me and Holly and Exeter yesterday, we just had to escape this group, this large melee of people in the street and we just were like fighting our way to get out and get out of Exeter and we were really grateful actually to be in quite little quiet Cornwall and to be, <laughs> to come away and to be able to breathe the fresh air um, and I think it can feel like that coming away from our day to day lives and from the busyness just to take a breath and we need to do that. Um, why don't we challenge ourselves to put aside the worries associated with organising the perfect Christmas this year or buying the perfect gifts, why don't we just know that the presence of being with God and thinking about the real meaning of Christmas and the real meaning of being together, let's just focus on that instead. Ultimately the most worthwhile Christmas gift we can give ourselves and to share with others is the time spent with Jesus and the time spent at his feet receiving from Jesus and to hear his voice in our lives. So thanks a lot for listening and I'll just, I'll just pray before the worship team come out. Yes, Lord, I just thank you for this passage about Mary and Martha.
thank you that in a few verses you're able to summarise two totally different outlooks on time and, and how we can use our time. And I just pray Lord, that we can be like Mary over this busy season. And with all the worries in the world at the moment and everything that everyone's going through, Lord, I just pray that we're able to take the time to be with you and to reflect on you. You will give us that confidence and that courage and you'll give us the words and the wisdom as, as we sit at your feet and we do receive from you. I pray this week for all of us who find it hard to open our Bibles or to, to read your word. I just pray that we would feel inspired to do that and we'd feel inspired to find, find five, ten minutes at the start of our day before we rush on into the busy busyness of everyday life. I just pray we're able to find time with you. And I pray that that's a pattern that we, we come to acknowledge that we need to do that and we need to, to really put you first in our day-to-day -day lives. And I, I just pray this advent, Lord, that we would be able to do that as we think about the meaning of Christmas and putting you first as we go forward into the Christmas season. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you, Tim. We didn't worry, Tim. I haven't thought about Christmas yet. But, uh, <laughs> I've got a month yet. <laughs> well, we got some friends this morning that come to join us, and uh, they're going to lead us in a song. So we look forward to this. If you don't understand, maybe a different language, but the words are up here, so you can sing along and follow along as well. Okay, so. Uh, Pastor, Pastor Julia. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Um, maybe some of you are thinking, who are we? We are a small, small uh, Filipino um, Christian church. Um, started last uh, 2016, and we uh, used to go to the St. Ambulance Hall up there, and uh, recently there was a problem with the heating, that's why they moved us down here, uh, across the building, and so I think that's when we met Rachel, when we were singing, and uh, they were drawn to the song, they came to say hi, and uh, and we're here. <laughs> we join you this Sunday because uh, next Sunday we will be going back to the St. Abraham's Church. And it's really nice to meet everyone. Um, we see our neighbor, Tim and Holly, and we see some colleagues as well um, this morning. And uh, thank you for the very warm welcome. It's an honor to be with uh, all of you and uh, to worship with you this morning. Um, as, uh, it's not the, the song that we're going to sing will be in English. There will be a little bit of Filipino, which is our language, and a little bit of Spanish, if you can relate to that. But just a little bit. <laughs> but the rest of the song is in English. So we would like you to join us. See you soon.
Okay, we're blessed today to see we have many hot pots down on the side table here. So we don't want anyone slipping away without having a hot pot first. So uh, stay and enjoy and have some fellowship with us and that'll be fantastic. And uh, we'll fellowship together. Tim was saying we'll spend time. So it's good to spend time together as well. So thank you, Tim. Bless you, everyone. Father, we want to say thank you that we can get our priorities right and we'll spend time with you. We'll seek your face and hear your voice. And Father, get guidance for our life day by day. So Father, as we take on board and we don't become too busy, too caught up with everyday life, the Father, we can just put everything in perspective. Lord Jesus, that we can rest, that we can stop, we can hear, and we can listen. In Jesus' name, this morning we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay, so I'll, I'll hand over to the ladies and they'll get it all organized, I'm sure. All right, please stay and enjoy with us.